Hi, welcome to this lecture on operational amplifiers, or op amps for short. So what is an op amp? Well, an operational amplifier, or op amp, is used to amplify an input signal. And this is a really useful device in standard electronics. So some of the uses of op amps are, like I just said, amplifying a signal, such as sound. So you could use an op amp to take an audio signal and make it louder, for example. Um, a voltage comparator, which is where you take two voltages and try to determine which one is larger. Um, for an example where that would be used, inside a 55i timer there's voltage comparators. But there's lots more usage, usages of an op amp as well. So similar to a 555 timer, an op amp is a very, very versatile chip. But the most important thing that, that we tend to use it for is this first one here, which is amplifying a sound, or amplifying a signal. Sound could be that signal, but we mainly use it to amplify a signal. And what that means is that if we take an input signal like this, we can make it much more amplified, which means higher voltages and lower voltages in our peak-to-peak, -peak, just by running it through an op amp. So let's look at a brief history of the op amp. In 1963, Bob Widler designed the 702 op amp, and it, was, it consisted of just nine transistors, and it had a gain of over a thousand, which means that if you put in an input signal, you could increase the voltage of that input signal by up to a thousand. But it was very expensive to build. In 1965, Bob designed an even better op amp called the 709 that had a gain of over 60,000. Uh, but then in 1968, the, the UA 741 op amp was released. Uh, this had a gain of around 250,000, and this is still what we consider the modern op amp. Released in 1968, it's still in wide production and in wide use in a lot of different products. So here's a schematic of the 741 op amp. Um, and, and basically, as you can see, there's a, there's a lot of transistors scattered throughout here, a few resistors, etc., etc. But this is really a discrete circuit for the most part. We just have transistors and resistors and our pins. So we're not doing any sort of fancy digital logic in here or anything like that. We're just biasing transistors in creative ways uh, in order to get gains of on an input signal. So here's the symbol for an op amp. Uh, we have five basic pins. Uh, we have V plus and V minus, which we'll talk about a little bit more in a second. But these two pins combined with some circuit on the outside will be how you'll get an input signal in. We have V source plus and V source minus, which are um, usually high value steady voltages that, uh, that provide the source, vol the source voltage and current for running the chip. And then of course we have the output voltage V out. So the 741 uh, is packed into a standard integrated circuit package um, and an 8 pin through hole chip is, would be a standard example and you know so we can kind of see here what that might look like. Um, so you can see all of the pins I just talked about ranging from the N minus and N plus the V source, the output, et cetera, et cetera. One important pin here on eight is called NC. That means not connected. So that pin is actually just not connected to anything. And there's also these two pins called offset, which we're not going to end up using in our usages. Okay, so the basic operation of an op amp, even really, really simple case, is that we were to take, each op amp has what's called an AOL, which is the open loop gain of that op amp. And so the formula for calculating the output voltage is we take V plus minus V minus and we multiply it by this uh, open loop gain for the op amp. Now that open loop gain could be upwards of 100,000 and it varies a lot in manufacturing, which means even two op amps might have different open loop gains. gains. So we actually would never use an op amp in this simple standard way of just connecting a signal to V plus and to V minus and then measuring the output. We're going to build a circuit outside of the op amp to help bring more stability to it because, again, this open loop gain is just simply not reliable. So let's look at the first type of simple way that we can use an op amp just by adding two resistors to it. And we'll call this an inverting amplifier. Now, an inverting amplifier, like I said, adds two resistors, RF and RN. We call it RN because it's the resistor between the voltage input and the chip. Um, and this amplifies the input based on resistors. It also inverts the signal. So here's the formula. If we have our voltage in, in order to determine our voltage out, it's multiplied by a ratio of RF over RN with a negative sign on the front. That's why it's called inverting, because it's going to invert the signal. But let's look at an example of that, because it'll make a lot more sense when we do. So let's say that we build an inverting amplifier where RN is 5K and RF is 10K. Uh, 
Well, if we do that, that would mean that v out should equal v in times, actually be negative v in, times 10k over 5k, which basically means that v out will equal minus 2 times v in. So my, our gain is negative 2. Uh, that's what we'll call this. We'll call this number the gain. So if we take a simple input signal, in this case just a sine wave that varies from negative 5 to 5, if we run it through an inverting op amp, then at every point in time, the output will be the value of the input times negative 2. So if we were to do that for this signal, we would end up with something that looks like this, which I suppose makes sense. When the input signal is at positive 5 volts, the output signal is at negative 10 volts because it's minus 2 times that. Same thing here, when the output or when the input is at negative 5 volts, the output is at positive 10 volts because it's just multiplied by negative 2. So we end up with, an, with another sine wave, but it's an inverted and amplified version of our input signal, which is here in blue. Now another way you can wire up an op amp, still with just two resistors, is as a non-inverting op amp. And in this case, the gain is still based on the two resistors, but it's wired a little bit differently so that our output is not inverted. So whereas before it was minus, there was a negative sign on the front of the equation, now V out just equals V in times 1 plus R2 over R1. Let's look at an example. So if we do the same example with a 5K and a 10K, well, that would mean that our V out is going to equal V in times 1 plus 10K over 5K. Well, this would be 2, that would be 1. So this means that V out is going to equal V in times 3. So our gain is 3. We get that just by deriving it from the equation. So if, we, so if we have that same input sine wave, which is, again, ranging from 5 to negative 5, and we run it through this non-inverting op amp in this particular example, then we're just going to multiply the voltage value at every point in time by 3. So if we look at the peak here, we can see that where, the, where this sine wave is 5, we would expect the, the, the non-inverted amplified version to be 15. And that's what we get. So the output is simply the input multiplied by 3, and that's just defined by our two resistors. So again, 5 becomes 15, minus 5 becomes minus 15. So we call this a non-inverting op amp because the signal is amplified but not inverted, as opposed to the inverting op amp where our signal is also inverted. Now another thing that you could build uh, with an op amp is called a voltage follower. And in this case, we're just going to wire V out into the input into the negative input, and this just means the output simply equals the input. Um, the usefulness here, you think, why would you ever want to do this? This would mean that my output signal and my input signal are identical. Well, the usefulness here is that the input impedance, meaning the seen resistance value uh, on, some, on an input signal, is very, very high. So you could potentially use this to take a very weak, or a signal that doesn't have a lot of um, current and, and simply Ampl not amplify it, but simply pass it through the, the op amp in order to produce the exact same signal but with more current so it could power something a little bit more powerful. So it's kind of like a buffer. Uh, another thing you can build with an op amp is called a summing amplifier. And that's where we'll use an equation like this where we have uh, a whole bunch of different input voltages, different signals that we want to add together. We want to sum them together. And, and if we have resistors, because you have to have resistors between those voltages and the input to the op amp, and we have another RF, we're bridging between the op amp and the V out, then our equation would look something like this to determine our output. And if you look at this carefully, you'll see that uh, each voltage is divided by the resistance value, and then in the end, that's multiplied by RF. And this is, this summing amplifier is also inverting, because we have a negative sign on there. But this can be used to sum together all of these voltages. And if you want to do it cleanly, you just make RF R1, R2, blah, 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 through Rn, all the same value. So if all the resistors have the same value, then this equation reduces to this, which simply shows that the V out equals the inversion of the sum of all of the input signals. So you could take different signals, input them into this op amp, and you could sum them all together to get an output. Another usage of an op amp is just as a simple comparator. So you could put V1 and V2 two different voltages that you want to compare, you could get the V out. And basically, because uh, remember, the op amp also has your 
Vs plus and Vs minus, which are the power supplies, more or less. And so if the output is the same as the positive voltage power supply, then that means that V1 is greater than V2. If the output is the same as the negative voltage power supply, then that means that V1 is less than V2. If the output is zero, then that means that they're equal. Um, so you could use this to build a simple comparator. Comparators are used in a wide variety of circuits, including microcontrollers, 555 timers, etc., etc. Now, an op-amp might not be the most efficient way to build a comparator, but you can do it. Uh, another interesting thing you can do with an op-amp is you can actually perform uh, uh, integrals and differentiation using an op-amp. So using a combination of a resistor and capacitor, depending on how you wire it up, you can either perform integration or you can do derivatives on signals. So if you think back to calculus and you remember doing integrals and derivatives on, uh, on graphs of waves, well, you could do that with an op-amp. Now there's some important properties of op-amps that I want to highlight here. Um, first is that the output cannot exceed Vs plus, and it can't go more negative than Vs minus. So that means that if I make Vs plus positive 18 volts, and I make Vs minus minus 18 volts, well then my output can't go any higher than 18 or any lower than negative 18. So no matter how much gain I have wired in here using, my, using the extra resistors, I can't exceed the output voltages that are defined by Vs plus and Vs minus. The other important thing to note is that Vs minus is not ground. It's the first thing everybody does is they go, okay, I'll wire five volts here and ground here, but it's not ground. It's, the, it's a negative voltage value. So it should be the negative version of whatever you put at Vs plus. So if I put 18 volts on Vs plus, I should have minus 18 volts at Vs minus, not ground. Uh, the other th important thing to know about an op amp is that, kind of like I mentioned with the voltage follower, it has a very high input impedance, which means that you can drive the input signal with something that has good voltage but would be very weak on current and still be able to amplify it properly. Okay, so let's review op amps. Operational amplifiers have a variety of uses. The main thing that they're used to do is amplify a signal. And the two most common circuits that we use with op amps are an, would be an inverting amplifier and as a non-inverting amplifier. And in both cases, it's just two resistors. The only question is, how are they configured? Thanks.